Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to withdraw medication from a vial. When withdrawing a medication from a vial, you want to make sure that you're following your employer's latest guidelines and the drug manufacturer's recommendations for withdrawing that medication from a vial. First, what you want to do is gather your supplies. So you want to look at your physician's order and see what medications ordered. Then get the correct medication in its vial. You'll also want to grab some alcohol prep, a syringe, and the size of syringe that you get depends on how much medication you're giving. So we're giving two mLs of medication, so we grabbed a three mL syringe. You also need a vial access device that's going to attach to the syringe's needle adapter to actually help you withdraw the medication from the vial. And there's various things you can use to help you withdraw the medication, which we'll go over here in a second. And then you're going to need an extra needle to actually administer the medication because you're not going to use the original access device that you attach to the syringe that helped you draw up the medication. Then you want to perform hand hygiene. After you've done that, you want to set up the syringe and attach the vial access device to the needle's adapter if needed, because some may already be prepared. Now you can use different vial access devices to withdraw the medication from the vial. One type of device is just a plain needle with that beveled tip. Another type is a blunt tip fill needle, and this can be used to decrease needle sticks during medication prep, or a filter needle can be used. Now, whenever you're withdrawing medication from a glass ampule, you'll always wanna use a filter straw, and I actually have a video that you can check out where I demonstrate how to do this, but some medications that need to be reconstituted from their powder form and removed from a vial may need this, but you wanna check with your facility's protocols and the drug manufacturer if a filter needle is needed to withdraw the medication from the vial. So we're going to attach a regular needle to the syringe's needle adapter. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up this packaging of the needle and I'm going to leave it in there. Then I'm going to open up the packaging of the syringe. And one thing about the syringe that you wanna remember is that you only want to touch the plunger phalange and the barrel. You never wanna to touch the shaft of the plunger or the end of this tip because you can contaminate your syringe. So we're going to take it out and I'm gonna hold it at the barrel. Then we're going to attach this on here. So we're just going to open this up and we're going to put our adapter into the end of the needle. And what we're gonna do, this is very important, you want to twist it. And make sure it's on there very securely because if not, while you're withdrawing the medication or going to administer it, it can easily become loose and then you're gonna to have to start all over. And after you have done that, you wanna keep it in its packaging with its cap on and just set it aside while you start to prep your vial. Next, prepare the vial for medication withdrawal. So you first want to flip off the top of the vial if it's present like this. Then open an alcohol prep pad and I'm going to clean the exposed top of the vial for 30 seconds. And I'm gonna scrub it because this is just gonna help decrease any contamination. And then after doing this for 30 seconds, you're going to let it completely dry. Now, while that is drying, we're gonna take our syringe and we're going to instill air in the syringe because we're going to take that air and actually inject it into this vial prior to removing the medication. Now, why do we wanna do that? Well, we want to prevent a vacuum from forming inside this vial. So for example, if not enough air is injected in this vial prior to removing the medication, it will actually cause it to be very difficult to remove the medication from the vial. And this is especially true for those multi-dose vials. So you may be wondering, how much air am I going to inject in this vial prior to removing the medication? Well, you're going to inject the same amount of air that is equal to the amount of medication that you're gonna remove from the vial. So our order says to give two mLs of medication. So we're gonna put two mLs of air in here and we're going to inject two mLs into the vial and then we're gonna remove two mLs of medication. Therefore, to do this, we're gonna hold our syringe at its barrel, and then we're gonna remove the cap and its packaging in one smooth motion, and we're gonna keep the cap inside the packaging and just put this in a secure location for when we need it later. 
and we're ready to instill the air. So we're gonna carefully pull on this flange of the plunger. We're gonna pull it back, so you'll be pulling it down. And you're looking at the markings on the syringe. So we're giving two mLs of medication. So we're gonna pull back at the two mark. And you wanna make sure that those plunger seal lines lines up with that too. And here we have two mLs of air. Now to inject air into the vial, I'm gonna hold the vial steady on a flat surface with my non-dominant hand, and then I'm gonna take my dominant hand and hold the syringe at its barrel. Now, whenever you're using a needle to pierce the top of a rubber stopper, you wanna use a technique that prevents coring. So what is coring? Well, coring occurs when parts of this rubber stopper enters into the vial and contaminates the vial, and possibly some of that rubber stopper could be injected to the patient and we want to absolutely prevent this. So you can use a certain technique to hopefully prevent that. Now look at your vial. Most vial stoppers have this bullseye type design and we wanna go in the center of the bullseye. So to do that, I'm gonna position the needle at the center of the bullseye at a 45 degree angle with the bevel of the needle up. So it's facing me and I'm going to apply pressure to the tip, and as the needle begins to penetrate the stopper, I'm gonna push down while simultaneously rotating the needle to a 90 degree angle in one smooth motion. Then I'm going to inject the air into the air space of the vial. Once the air has been injected into the vial, keep the needle access device in the vial. And then invert the vial by using the same hand positions with your non-dominant hand holding the vial and your dominant hand holding the syringe barrel. Once in position, move your fingers down to the plunger flange and we're going to pull back until we remove two milliliters of medication. So we're looking at the barrel markings to the two, and we're taking care not to touch the shaft of the plunger, just the plunger flange. And we're pulling down to two, and we're right at two. Now you wanna check for any air bubbles. If you see any, lightly flick the barrel to remove any air bubbles. And if you have any present, you want to push them out into the air space and then check again and make sure you're at the two mark and confirm that you have the appropriate amount of medication. Then you wanna remove the needle from the vial. And now we're gonna remove the needle that we use to withdraw the medication from the vial and apply a new needle to actually administer the medication. And this would be the same case for if we use a filter needle or one of those blunt tip fill needles. You would always change that out. Now, why do we want to change this needle out? Why wouldn't we use it to give it to the patient? Well, there's two reasons. One reason is whenever we penetrated the stopper of that vial, it can dull that needle, and that would not feel very good to the patient to get a dull needle if they're getting an injection, let's say. Also, this needle has been inside the medication vial. So on the needle, you can have some residue of the medication. And if we go and just inject that into our patient, it can get into the surrounding tissues and cause issues. So those are just some of the reasons we want to do that. I'm going to connect to my new needle. So it's in the packaging and I'm simply just going to connect it and again, the important thing you need to do, I'm going to twist it on securely. And it has its cap on and it's ready to give to our patient. So I'm gonna perform hand hygiene, double check everything again, and then I'm going to administer the medication. Okay, so that wraps up this video on how to withdraw a medication from a vial. And if you'd like to watch some more videos on how to do some other nursing skills, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.